ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lucor Automotive. Today, we are not at Lucor Automotive. We are in Indianapolis, Indiana for the first day of PRI. Uh, and I do apologize if I look a little bit disheveled. It was a very late night. Um, <laughs> worked all day, drove all night. Well, yeah, whatever. Don't worry about it. I'm here. I made it. It's a beautiful day here, if you can't tell. Uh, I'm waiting on my Uber, then we're going to head downtown to the Indiana Convention Center, do some PRI stuff. So if you're interested, stick around. All right, quick little Uber ride, and we are at the Indiana Convention Center. Uh, now, PRI this year is actually a members-only event. Typically, this has been open to anybody who had kind of any kind of connections to the automotive industry, to the racing industry. Uh, this year, they have restricted it to members only, so you actually have to register and get a membership to be able to come here. It's a pretty real, really, really cool event. Um, it gives you an opportunity to be able to schmooze and talk with a lot of the people uh, that you buy parts from. So all of your vendors, all of those people are going to be here. Also, there's going to be a whole lot of celebrities and people that are around the racing industry that will be here as well, as well as a lot of their rides. So really cool event. If you're attached to the racing industry next year, get some credentials, come to the PRI event. It's a good time. Um, 45 degree day, much nicer than normally is. Usually it's like four and 40 mile an hour winds, but hey, I'll take it. I look a little bit disheveled. Like I said, I was up a little late. Didn't get into my hotel room until 1.15 in the morning, which you know was less than ideal, but that's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my credentials. And then I've got some classes that I'm gonna go to today because I'm here for a lot of educational stuff. So stick around. Thanks, sir. Got my credentials. I am officially here. Gotta say, that was extremely nice. In and out of that line in just a matter of minutes. Good job on the cattle line, folks. We got like 30 of us checking us in. So, uh, gonna run around. I got about uh, 30 minutes until my first class this morning. And uh, let's see what we can see and who we can see. I know there's a couple of people uh, we'll probably talk with on camera. I know Bill and Billy, uh, Street Racing Garage and Old Man's Garage are here. Uh, all the street outlaws are here. Um, DNR Autos here. There's a bunch of us that are all here. Uh, junkyard Digs, blah, 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 blah. Great event. Brings a lot of people together, all the influencers from all over the place. Uh, Alex Taylor will be here. See if I can catch her on camera. We'll see. That's a busy woman. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Welcome to my PRI coverage. Speaking of Street Outlaws, farm truck. I'm sure you guys recognize that guy. These guys are here. Hey, I know that guy. Asian. The Daddy Day's new creation over here. Also, also, I would argue that the <laughs> the Grid Life booth. If you're not familiar with the Grid Life Racing Series, uh, it's a really cool ability for you to be able to get into door to door racing uh, as just kind of a normal schmo, a normal person. Um, you can build your car, you can go out and go do door to door racing, different levels of experience, different power levels, different ty types of chassis. Uh, I know Colton Wade is wandering around here somewhere. 
he actually races in grid life, I will make sure that I get a chance to, to, to have a moment with him and talk to him about uh, the grid life series and see what his experiences have been so far. Um, it is actually something that's kind of tempting for us. Uh, we need to be able to spend more of our time on track, not just necessarily working with everybody else's toys, but actually playing with some of our own. Um, and this has actually been a kind of a tempting way to be able to get something out and do some racing as well. Um, you know, maybe one of our cars we turn into a grid life type car. We'll see. Time for a little bit of education for me. Uh, one of the nice things with PRI is it's not just a trade show uh, where you can see all the new cool shiny stuff. It's also a way that you can learn a lot of things. Uh, throughout the days, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, they have these educational seminars. They've got guest speakers. They've got product seminars. They've got all kinds of different things that you can sit in on and learn from. Um, and I've got one here coming up very shortly. It's all part of what's called the PRI EDU system. And uh, it's one of the pieces that I love most about coming to PRI because it gives me an opportunity to learn from people who are also in the industry. And I can learn faster than me just trying to guess and check. So time for a little bit of learning. Well, that was a pretty good class. So somebody might be curious as to why we would go into such a thing. Why we do these? Why don't you just go out and hang out and get all the free stickers and signatures and pictures with everybody? Well, one of the beautiful parts about this experience is everybody coming out of that room is either a business owner or a business manager that's in exactly the same industry that I am. They're dealing with the same things that we are. New customers, old customers, supply issues, costs, all of this stuff. Where else am I gonna have a better connection and a better time to be able to talk to other people that are going through exactly the same things that I am across the country than right here, right now? This isn't about free stickers. This is not about getting free swag. This is not about expensive lunches on uh, Rich. <laughs> This is about learning and helping our business grow, which is one of the things you guys are all very much helping with us with. This kind of thing where we can share what we do and we can share the projects we work on and the cars that we get to deal with, this kind of thing, that's what it's all about. So anyway, um, I got a couple minutes, I think I'm gonna go to lunch. So uh, I'll be back with you guys in a little bit. All right, y'all, something sad just happened. I need a minute. I just realized Sugar Fire Barbecue in downtown Indianapolis is permanently closed. If you're a fellow fat guy, you understand. I don't know what I'm gonna do. My whole lunch plan is ruined. Never fear, there's always a plan B. Low Miller's Pub, right around the corner from the convention center. And on my way through the sh show, <laughs> I ran into Mike of DEI. You saw my uh, header wrap stuff that we did. This is the gentleman I uh, conned into make, doing my header wrap for me for a couple of hours. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it up here. Go watch. We're gonna go eat. <laughs> Well, thanks for lunch, Mike, at DEI. Appreciate that. I wasn't uh, expecting the lunch from you guys, but I appreciate it. Luck Miller's Pub, always a good time. Amazing potato soup. Uh, I need to get over to uh, where the Old Man's Garage Bill and Billy 
of Street Racing Channel R, uh, which is over yonder, way down there at the end. So I'm going to be over that way. I'll get with you guys in a second. So, for my six viewers who don't know who Bill and Vicky of Old Man's Garage are, or the Cracker Barrel Malibu, there she is. That's with her brand new, barely been driven motor. Barely been driven, but will be driven. It looks good. Thank you. And look at that. This is how you street car, right? That's how you street car. Power and steering, that. air conditioning, and brakes. <laughs> yeah, that's how you street car. This is our version of street car. Yeah. I get it. I like it. And mechanical belt driven water bottle. Yes. And everything functions. It ain't just there for looks. Right. This is this I mean it's it's rowdy. Let's not fly. Yeah, but I mean it really, but it's totally really good. Streamable. It's totally yeah, streamable. Yeah, it's smooth. Uh, I was really shocked because when I talked to Nolan from Esky yeah. about what I was doing, I told him what I was building. And it's high compression, it's 13 It's got 250 to 260 pounds of crank pressure on the cylinders and crank it over. It's got compression. Yeah. But when you drive it up the road, it is completely like you would swear it's a pump gas 9 to 1 compression. We did some cruising up the road. Completely smooth. But man, I'm telling you what, it's got power right now. It sounded fantastic on the dime. Dude. I can't wait to get it someplace so I can cruise and really show what it's capable of because it runs really, really good. And this is a this is a Bob McVeigh special for those of you. Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob. So Uncle Bob, I actually met through these guys, bailed us out last year on a big block Mopar nightmare, um, and he's basically your kind of like end all be all as far as machining goes. He does all the work. Set up the valve train geometry, set the valve springs up, measure push rod length, zero deck block for distance. Board, and this is even, like there's line. He does everything. He does everything. And now, when I saw in your video, he even like, you guys ran it on the dyno. It didn't make exactly what he wanted to do, so let's stop everything. Went back and redegraded the cam. No, no, no. That was Billy's engine. This one, when we first fired it up and uh, made a pull on it, we were like, what the heck's wrong? It should make more power than that. And there was a problem with the timing light. Oh! It had a dial on it, and I don't usually use one with a dial. So when I set it at 36, it was actually at 20. So we turned it up to 36, and then at 16 degrees of time, yeah, like effect yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, there you go. I'm really happy. I'm very thankful. For the dog. I want, I want to ask you something before I get this on camera, I'm off camera. So I'll be right back. <laughs> for those of you who are curious about whether or not this lady travels correctly, I'm loaded down with like 100 cookies. <laughs> That's fantastic. My goodness. Thanks for the sponsors. All right, all right. Yep, yep, yep. Take care of the people that take care of you. Exactly. I like it. Vicky travels with style. Uh, any of you guys who have seen, uh, well, yeah, this guy. CJ. He's still standing. If you've seen the video, made it out alive. He went through a little bit of a wild ride in a recent ride, but Raggedy Ann is gonna live again. Coming back. Yes. We've got 
we got a lot of the parts transferred. Uh, like it's another, another body or shell is what we got is well underway. We fired it up two nights ago. Nice. Um, got a lot of tedious stuff, the small stuff to do, but it's coming back. So springtime, you'll be back in the seat. Springtime for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. He has his own YouTube channel as well. If you don't subscribe to this guy and follow this guy, the money that you can make off of YouTube can help put you back in the seat. Absolutely. So this is the guy to follow. What's your YouTube channel? Raggedy Ann, Ohio Small Tire. There you go. Raggedy Ann, Ohio Small Tire. Follow this guy. Help support the small town racers and the small time shops. These are the guys that make doing what we do make sense. You know, it's the it's the, the real people that are out there doing it that entertain us, that keep us all in business, that you know, show some support. Appreciate it, man. Thanks. Very cool. 401 powered gremlin with the original owner. Hi. All right, so here's the skinny. Here's what I wanted to talk to Bill about after off camera. He and I have talked about them going on power tour or drag week or something like that. Because um, I think Bill and Vicky would both enjoy it, and I know a ton of the viewership would enjoy it. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to talk to him about is have you ever thought about starting your own? drag and drive event I think it would be awesome I think they would be exactly the people to do this because that car is perfect for drag and drive it'll run on E85 you get it to the track drive the heck out of it get back in it drive to the next track right so the neat thing that would work with them is keep it to the small tracks you know keep it to the mom and pop stuff keep it real to what they are um, and host an event where you hit maybe four different tracks over a five-day period, keep it to a smaller driving range, so it's more about the racing than it is about the driving, but it still limits the field so that it has to be a street drivable car. I think it'd be awesome. I think it'd be a great way to show some business and push some stuff to the smaller tracks, keep those guys in business, still be very true to the, to the street racing channel, the old man's garage way of doing things, you know, the mom and pop type stuff. Um, I think it would be awesome. Everybody, if you think this would be awesome, A, comment, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. B, mention it. Tell Bill that he should do this. He's a busy dude, but I think this would be an awesome, awesome addition to their world of things that they do. No prep, small tire, street car, drag and drive. Limit it to maybe like 100 cars. And it's actual racing, like real serious racing. How cool would that be? All right, anyway. Wandering on. ATM carburetors. Um, you've probably seen, again, back with Bill here, he's running an ATM carburetor on his Malibu. Um, and we actually are just now specking out a new build that we're not gonna talk about yet because the customer's still kind of trying to figure it out um, that actually gonna be running an ATM carburetor here very shortly. Um, so I'm gonna stop and talk for a little bit. Back with you guys in a little bit. These guys do really, really good stuff. Very, very interesting co company history, really good product. Gonna have some conversation. Be back with you guys in a little bit. Just taking some video of your jewelry. Go right ahead. We were talking about it on the Look at that. Old Man Garage Signature Series. Oh, 
That was a really great group of people there. Let's talk with Angela and Tim of ATM Carburetors. Uh, family business, small business, old school, doing it the way it used to be done kind of people. Um, good group of people. We're really excited to do some business with those guys and run some carburetors on things. There's a good chance that you're going to see one or two of their carburetors on one or two of my cars personally here in the near future as well. Plus, like I said, we've got that customer's project that as soon as he says jump, we'll get that carburetor coming from ATM and we'll start working on that. Anyway, back to the show. Hey, who's that guy? How's your support for BTR? Awesome. It was Billy. Schaefer's oil on both sides of the road here today. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, anybody who's paid attention to any of our hot rod stuff, uh, these are the guys whose oils we've run. Their high zinc stuff is what we put in all of our cars, all of our classics. Anything flat tap it, we run their high zinc racing oil. Stop by, say hi. We'll be back in a little bit. Quick for your front video. <laughs> right. Did you notice how when you started that machine, it was kind of rattling too? Yeah. Basically, we're putting his oil on about nine inches. Okay? It's heat and pressure to plate this oil. Okay. Once it plates, wow, pushing on nine inches. I mean, I'm lifting the damn thing off the ground. Wow. Pull it at nine inches. Brad Pin oil is smoking at six inches. Where's my finger? Wow. Push. friction you reduce heat. That's a sales technique right there. There you go. That's why you run Schaefer's Oil. Hopefully you haven't seen it here first. But there's a reason we run this stuff. Very nice. Pretty interesting. Absolutely. Thank you very much. See, this is why you come to the trade show is to connect with people whose products you buy to be able to show off what they do. If you guys don't buy Shaver's Oil, you should buy Shaver's Oil. And we buy ours from Market A1, whom you all know, Market A1 from Buckeye Lake. He's our Shaver's dealer. And yes, he's all the way across the city from us, but we still go buy our stuff from him.
What do we have here? Delora. Is that who's two three? Is that? Uh, that's a Ford Focus. Ford Focus. Uh, Eagle Boost. Okay. Yeah, all that. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's just the base of what I'm racing against. It's crazy. That's pretty. Rich boy toys for sure. That's beautiful. You see a turbo, you look at it. Yeah. But, <laughs> what's in the trunk? Yeah, it's Ford powered. 2 3 turbo. The Delara. Beautiful car. Expensive, a little out of my price range, but beautiful car. So for those of you who don't know, I'm an idiot who has a bunch of AMCs. This dude and that's our just bought that. Position. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's an AMC race car built out of a 72 Javelin that was built in the 80s but has never raced. Right. So but it's a complete car. Yes. We're making Minus a the drive shaft. Making yeah, AMC. Drive, Minus shaft, the drive, drive shaft and fuel system and electrical. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Everything else should be there. It's got hey. a of AMC 401 board stroke to a 431, 12 and a half to one compression, 630-ish horsepower NA. It's got a built turbo 400 behind it with a trans brake, Ford 9-inch out back. So it's going to be a really killer car. We just need to finish putting it together, which apparently the other people couldn't do for some reason. And it's older than you are. Yeah, so the car was obviously built in 72, but then it was bought out of a side yard in 82 for 300 bucks. Turned into a race car, sold again in 1990. The guy has owned it that we bought it from for 32 years. All he did was paint it, put brakes on it, put an engine in it. It's never ran. So we're gonna put it on the track. So if you don't follow this guy's channel yet, we re we met on Power Tour last yeah. year. Um, yeah, he was one of the the support people that helped all of the poor people who broke down all over the place. Yeah, that was basically your job. Like it all was, week. yeah, with the help of these guys. So there's Scott from Holly. So yeah, Scott. Dude, you look like a friggin' giant compared to me. <laughs> he is a giant. He is a, he is, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> that's fair. But, but yeah, yeah, we're making lots of bad decisions in the automotive world, but we're having fun doing it. Absolutely, absolutely. So all of my AMC people, uh, go follow this. This is gonna be awesome. Yeah, we have to see. five or six AMCs now. We're um, too many. We're making AMC great again, dude. Yeah. <laughs> we will make AMC great again. Stay Perfect. tuned. There's more coming. All right, let's do some more of the show. Uh, did not picture uh, Dylan McCool. Talk with Dylan for another long little bit of time. That's kind of one of the funny parts about this show. Uh, Scott and I initially had been talking there, and as we're standing there talking, you run into somebody else, you run into somebody else, you run into somebody else, and then uh, you know an hour and a half goes by and you've missed your class about social media marketing. So, hey, Rich, sorry. I missed my class on social media marketing. Sorry. to a clear shield. It'll go back to the clear shield right there. That's called photochromatic technology. It's all impregnated in, in the uh, in the shield. So let's take a little walk. I got a bunch of other stuff. All right, let's do it. Lots of cool stuff here. Lots of cool stuff here. You can never see it. Well, I can never see it all. I've only gotten about uh, an eighth of the show in so far, and I'm almost done with day one.
were you standing outside the men's room to interview? Uh, I just ran into somebody I knew. <laughs> then my dad's using the restroom. Well, we, just, we were discussing earlier today that you're not allowed to interview each other when you're standing in the restroom. In the restroom? you got to come outside. It's a little weird. You're like, hey, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> you might Don't be mention monetize for that one. <laughs> Yeah, time to have another conversation. Back in a bit. Good bunch of folks there. If you haven't seen the content that I've done with my Headman header set, there you go. It's up there on the top. Been very happy with that. Uh, fitment was excellent. Insulation was, you know, it's pain, but they were excellent. Worked exactly how I wanted them to. Good stuff. Oddly, they don't have any new stuff coming out for the AMC Spirit V8 platform. I don't know why, but, you know, Maybe later on, as they get more popular, we'll see some new stuff. Let's keep on walking. Well, there you go. That's going to be it for uh, my day one coverage of PRI. Had a great time. Uh, didn't get nearly as far as I should have. Too many conversations. Uh, started the day down there. 
still have half of that haul, of this haul left to do, plus all of that haul, and the machinist throw, and a, yeah, it's a good thing this is a three day event. Anyway, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this, just taking you around the show at PRI here, uh, giving you a little sample of, for those of you who haven't been here or who can't get into this kind of a show. If you're interested in this kind of thing, it's a great experience, um, really a fantastic way to be able to touch the people and talk to the people that you talk to over the phones or that you run their products. You want to have conversations about things as far as sponsorship goes, as far as development goes, whatever. This is really a fantastic way to do it. So there you go. Day one PRI 2022 here in Indianapolis, Indiana. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of jazz. See you again tomorrow for an even bigger day. Take care.